to be in this place on this morning. We praise God this morning for God's presence this morning. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for where you brought us from, God. Thank you, Lord, for where you brought us through, God. We're so grateful this morning that you have allowed us to enter into your sanctuary this morning. God, I don't know about anybody else, but it's been a week, God. Oh, it's been a challenging week, God. But this morning, God, I woke up with the Lord on my mind. I woke up this morning and said, I don't care if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? And so I stopped and I began to give God praise right then this morning. I began to just clap my hands. I began to just shout hallelujah. I began to just say thank you, God, because you've been so good, God. You open up doors for me this week, God. You close some doors for me this week. Yeah. When the enemy was on my track, God, you came by and just stood still yeah. and said, peace be still to the storm, God. Even though the winds and the waves were coming my way, God, you stood and interceded on my behalf. So, God, I woke up this morning and said, and while it may not be perfect, mm -hmm. <laughs> It's still praiseworthy. <laughs> While it may not be perfect, God, it's still praiseworthy. While it may not be all that I want it to be, I remember to thank God that it could not be what it could have been if it had not been for you. So I came this morning, I don't know about anybody else, but I came this morning with a praise on my lips. I came this morning ready to give God some praise. And I don't know about you in your special places and in your circumstances, but I just want to remind you that he woke you up this morning. Mm -hmm. I want to remind you that he gave you the use of your limbs. Maybe you're not able to move as well as you used to do many years ago, but God, thank God you're still able to wake up this morning and tell God thank you. Thank you. So in your respective places, mm, in your virtual space this morning, we're just asking God to just come in and spend some time with you this morning. We're just asking God to show up. So, so I'm asking you right now to just take a moment and create a sanctuary in your space. I don't know where you may be joining us from. God, you might be right here in the city of Atlanta. Maybe you're in South Georgia, North Georgia. Maybe you're not even in the state of Georgia. Maybe you're in Texas. You're in California. You're in Chicago. You're even in Michigan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and you might be in Alabama. Hallelujah. <laughs> But I just stopped by this morning. Oh, Lord, the Spirit just convicted me right there. Man. <laughs> Amen. The Spirit just says, I don't care where you are. I don't care what circumstance you may be going through. Yeah. The Spirit says it is time to worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about you, but will you just start worshiping God where you are? Will you just start giving God the praise where you are? I know we're not able to gather in the physical building, but God wants you this morning to create a sanctuary. God wants you to carve out a space that belongs to only him. God wants to speak to you. God wants to bless you. God wants to provide for you. God wants to seek you in a new and different way. But God said, I need you to just create a space where it's just me and you. Just me and you. Stop all the distractions. Whatever you're doing, tell them it can wait. Because right now, I am in the presence of the Lord. I might be in my kitchen, but I'm in the presence of the Lord. I might be in my living room, but God is with me. I might be in the den, but God is with me. I might be in my bedroom, but God has stopped by this morning. And because God has stopped by, I'm ready to give him all the praise and all the honor. So will you just come on into worship? We're so glad to have you this morning. You're so welcome in this space. And as our praise team begins to prepare themselves, God, to begin to welcome and set the atmosphere, 
just want you to stop on by. Mm. I want you to just show up and show out. Somebody needs you this morning, God. Somebody's struggling with something this morning. Somebody feels like they can't go on this morning. Will you stop by and just let them know that you're still God? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, as we just enter to the presence of the Lord, I dare you just to lift your hands and give God the glory. Hallelujah, for the Lord is good. Let's just take a moment to worship him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we exalt your name. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's just take a few moments and just praise him. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Just clap your hands and give him glory. Come on. And while you're clapping, just open up your mouth and say, Lord, I love you. Come on. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I exalt your name. Lord, you are. As we sing, what a mighty God we serve. Let's just think on how good he is and how great he is because he truly is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Yes, Come on, wherever you are, just stand on your feet and give God the praise. If you know he's a great God,
hands together. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, yes. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. And I tell you, in this season, we have to remind ourselves of just how awesome God is. We have to keep reminding ourselves of how mighty God really is. Because if we listen to all the political pundits and all of the news reports, we would get discouraged and think our God is not on the case. But I just want to remind you that we still serve a mighty God. And at some point it says, every knee shall bow and every tongue will have to confess. So, so don't, don't, don't get discouraged. Don't give up in the midst of the storm. God is still on the case. Amen. We're going to have our prayer this morning from the Reverend Charles Phillips, followed by our scripture reading from the Reverend Patrick Clay Joyner. Amen. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, because we thank you that you watched over us last night, Lord, and you rose us to yet another day. Another opportunity to see you, to worship you, and to praise you. And we come before you today, Lord, simply because we want to say thank you. And for you are a mighty good God. You're one that we can count on in all situations. There's nothing that should ever come before you that you have not already seen and put together a plan, Lord, that we might be victorious, that we might have an opportunity to be a light, a city set on a hill, mm -hmm. that, Lord, people may see our good works and come worship the Father with us, O oh Lord. So we just thank you today, Lord. We thank you for having a place, a safe hiding place, O oh Lord, that we can go to in the time of trouble. That, Lord, we may come before you with singing and with praise, knowing that, Lord, you inhabit the praises of your people. And we just thank you this morning, Lord, for you have been such a good God. You've been with us through all circumstances, all situations. And, Lord, as you promised, you've never left us alone. You've always been there. You've always helped us, oh, Lord, to make it through each and every situation. So we just say thank you this morning. We thank you for each and every person assembled under the sound of our voice. We thank you for holding on our hands, Lord, that we may be able to walk and run this race that is set before us. But Lord, you are a good God. We thank you for our church home. We thank you for those that are assembled, Lord, who represent the house of God, that we come together one by one accord. The Lord, we may let you know that we love you. We perfectly magnify and lodge your name. And we love the holy hand because you are God and there is none like you. So as we go forth, Lord, help us to always be mindful, Lord, that in you we have each and everything we need. According to your riches and glory for Christ's sake, we praise thee to evermore to say amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Phillips, for that prayer. And at this time, we will have our scripture reading by Reverend Patrick Clay Jordan. Good morning, Mount Zion. The scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse, going through to the end. This is the New International Version. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, but 
buffeted by the wind because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at Genesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. May God bless the reading, the hearing of his holy word. always waiting for us on the other side. <laughs> amen. Amen. And he will not let us sink and he sure won't let us drown. So we give God praise this morning for that powerful word. We're coming to that time in our service where we pause to just lift up a few important items before you. I want to just remind you, first of all, uh, in case you hadn't figured it out, our service time is shifted, uh, and we appreciate you shifting with us in this season of, of a new now. We're doing things a little bit different. So please set your clocks, mark your calendars, share the word with someone and let them know that they sign on and join us on 11.30 each Sunday morning. Amen. And then I want to just remind Mount Zion, we had an awesome intercessory prayer session on this past Wednesday. Uh, but this Wednesday, we're, we're shifting back to our Word on Wednesday, our WOW Bible study. And this series for the next month will be led by Reverend Patrick Clay Joyner. And the series is entitled, Grow Your Faith and Build Your Resilience. So I invite you to join us on the conference line, 866-216-8789 on Wednesday evenings for our Word on Wednesday Bible study. And I'm sure Reverend Patrick Clay Joyner will be excited to have you join her in this journey for the next four weeks. And then also I want to lift up, we've been lifting up our Virtual Learning Academy. God has been opening so many doors and doing so many awesome things in that ministry. I am so excited. I am so just in awe of what God is doing. It has grown to the point where we need a little bit more help, amen. And I'm not ashamed to ask for help. Uh, it says that you have not because you ask not. And so we need some volunteers. But the key is we need you to be dedicated. Uh, we need some volunteers that are willing to show up at least twice a week. So they give you three days to do whatever else you want to do. And you can pick a shift between two hours all the way up to four hours. 
And so if you're interested, you can text us. Um, there's a, a small typo. The number is actually 404-548-8169. Or you can email us at servefirst, S-E-R-V-F-I-R-S-T, Incorporated, at Comcast.net. And we would love to have you come in and work with us and you know Jesus had a special place in his heart for the children and he reminded us lest we become as these children we shall not inherit the kingdom of God and so we just invite you to continue to connect with us share the word with someone invite them into our virtual space via Facebook live uh, they can find us at facebook.com slash Mount Zion AMECP. If they're looking for us on YouTube, they can follow us at Mount Zion AME Church dash College Park. And if you're on the conference line, the number is 866 216 8789. And we just invite you to connect with us, and we also invite you to sow a seed into this ministry. We're doing some awesome things here at Mount Zion, but we can't do them without you. And so we need you. We need you right now to sow a seed into this ministry. You can give through all of our online giving platforms. You can give via Cash App at dollar sign Mount Zion CP. You can also give via our Yellowfly app and look for Mount Zion AME College Park. Look for the College Park name so you're given to the correct Mount Zion and our church logo. You can also use some traditional methods. You can drop it in the P.O. Box in the mail and it will come to our P.O. Box at P.O. Box 961-588 Riverdale, Georgia 309. Two, six. Or we have a secure mailbox right here at the corner of our driveway. You can just come by, turn in, drop it in the slot. It is locked and secured and we will retrieve it from the mailbox. And so we just invite you. You know, I know people say, oh, the pastor always say, you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. I'm just going to tell you, you trying to go through something in 2020, and you're trying to figure out how to get your finances in order, and you're doing it without God, without honoring God for what he has blessed you to do, without sowing a seed into the ministry that you call home, then I just tell you, your finances ain't going to be right until you get right with God. I, I, I'm a living witness of what God can do when you sow a seed. Because out of that seed, you will reap a harvest. And so we just invite you to be part of the ministry, to come and share with us as we do the work that this that God has called us to in his kingdom. Amen. I want you to continue to lift each other up for prayer. We call some names on our intercessory prayer call on uh, Wednesday, and we continue to bring those before the Lord. We continue to lift up our members, those who are struggling with COVID-19, family members. We lift up those who are recovering from illnesses, those who are recovering from health challenges, financial challenges, challenges on their job. We put you before the altar continuously. And please know that Mount Zion is always praying for you. Regardless of who you are or where you are, we invite you to connect with us. If you are out there and do not have a church connection, we invite you to join us virtually. You can text the word Mount Zion CP to the number 24251. And we will be so glad to welcome you into our virtual connection. Because in this season, we need to have a strong connection with God. So we just invite you to just come on in and experience God. Yeah, it feels a little different. It's not the way we are traditionally used to doing it. But God tells us that new mercies are 
mercy every day. New mercies he creates for us. So we're creating new traditions. We're, we're, we're worshiping the same God in the same place, but we're doing it in a new way. And I believe God is pleased with it because of the favor he has shown. So will you continue to share the word with somebody, invite them in? If they're looking, tell them they don't need to look anymore. If you have family members that haven't been connected, now's the time for them to get connected. Oh, it's time to just hook up with God. Because I don't know how we're going to make it through these next few weeks without him. And I sure don't know what's going to happen on November the 3rd. But we might need God in a way we ain't never needed him before. I encourage you, it's my last announcement, and the praise team is going to come and begin to set the atmosphere, that you vote. Oh, if you never voted before, I don't even want to know. Just go vote. I pray you register. Many of our counties are voting today. The weekend voting is going on. Many counties are voting this weekend and next weekend. So there is no excuse. Because see, if you're standing in line for the release of the newest Air Jordan, if you're standing in line for a slutty vegan hamburger, if you're standing in line to get into a concert, if you're standing in line in the rain to get a ticket to the Super Bowl, I don't know what you wondering about, but to stand in line for something that will affect your very life, just vote. Encourage somebody you know to vote. Offer to give them a ride. There's places that are offering rides. Uh, there is no reason. If you don't have a ride, call me. I will send an Uber for you. And pick you up and make sure you get to the polls. The praise team is getting ready to come so the word can prepare to come forth. And we just praise God for what God is doing in this place. And we just thank you for joining us and connecting with us. And I believe God has a word for us on today. Amen. know how great is our God. Hallelujah. He's the name above all names, and he's truly worthy of all our praise. Come on, wherever you are right now, I dare you just to lift your hands and say, Lord, you are great God. Lord, you are mighty God. Come on, we're going to get into the word, and we're going to get into worship, but let's just take a moment to just lift up his name. Hallelujah, you are great God. You are mighty God. We exalt your name, Father. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We bless your name. You are our, our Father. We exalt your name. Yeah. 
So I just want to draw your attention to a couple of those verses that was read from Matthew 14, 22 through 33. And we're going to begin at verse 25. And it says, And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy Father, we come lifting you up, God. For you are worthy of all our praise. The songwriter said, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. So this morning, Lord, I just praise you with the one that I have. God, I pray right now that these words that have went forth shall seek and find a good resting place. For we know that the word of the Lord is like the grass will wither, but the and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So now give me preaching power that I may lift your name on high, that the people will not see Pastor E, but they will see you. And that because of that, they will be blessed. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. amen. So this is a text that we're going to deal with for the next couple of Sundays. But for this preaching Sunday, I want to use the subject, just do it. Everybody's heard that slogan. We're familiar with it from Nike. But today, I'm talking about it from a Christian context. You know, Nike claimed, uh, coined this infamous phrase years ago. But in 2 Corinthians 5 and, 17, 5 and 7, it makes a declaration that says, we walk by faith and not by sight. The implication of this declaration is that a life of a Christian or a believer or a disciple is comprised of a day-by-day -day walk, whereby we take steps from where we are to the place where God would have us to go. This is not just true physically or geographically, uh, but it's also true spiritually. Hebrews 11 and 8 reminds us, it says that by faith, Abraham, when called to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Some of us have walked with the Lord long enough to know that the Lord has a way of summoning us to make some lateral and literal moves. I can testify personally that God has caused me to make some geographical moves that I felt were ordained by God. And I'm sure some of you can testify that you were once in one city or one place and heard the Lord tell you to move someplace else. Maybe a friend or a family member has shared this with you, and many times they will tell you that their families thought they were losing their mind, or that they were crazy, but they took the step anyway, because they believed that their steps were ordered by the Lord. So what I'm suggesting is that sometimes God will summon us to make literal moves. Literally moving uh, geographically, it may mean changing a job. It may mean moving to another church. Like some of you have made a move from the church that you used to attend. It can even mean changing denominations. It means moving from one dimension to the next or making moves to go back to school when you thought you were finished. Sometimes God has a way of summoning us to make lateral and literal and sometimes lateral moves. And of course, God is always summoning us to go to a new place in him, a new place spiritually. In the Bible, it tells us that we go from glory to glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. We go from faith to faith and from strength to strength. 
discipleship and maturity and transformation are the hallmarks of a maturing disciple. God forbid that we're the same person that we were 10 years ago that we are today. God forbid that we're the same person. God forgive, forgive that we're given the same offering in 2020 that we were given in 2000. God forbid that we still have the same level of maturity at 40 that we had when we were 15. Come on now. Somebody can testify to this. We know some folks that uh, are acting, they're 35, but they're acting like they're 15 years old emotionally. God is always calling us to transformation and maturity and discipleship, for these are the hallmarks of a maturing Christian. And I'm so glad that the Lord accepts us the way we are, but he refuses refuses to leave us that way. God has a way of challenging us and summoning us to cross over to the other side. And as much as we would prefer certainty to uncertainty, the truth of the matter is that there are times when we do decide to follow God. And, and we are, uh, uh, when we decide to follow God and to follow God spiritually, geographically, or physically, and we have no idea what God is doing. Uh, to follow God uh, uh, means that sometimes God is taking us uh, uh, where, uh, and, and God is taking us where he wants to take us. And, and, or, or, and we don't have any idea where that is. We don't know where we're going. If we, if, if we tell the truth and we don't act like we all spiritual and all deep like that, uh, uh, we, that we act like sometimes we got God on speed down. <laughs> I, I, I know nobody here today hearing my voice acts like that. But there are some people that I swear they hear from God all day long. If it's 7 a.m. in the morning, they're hearing from God. If it's 9 a.m., God's always telling them something. If it's 10 a.m., they're hearing from God. But I'm wondering, has God got that much time on his hands that he's doing nothing but talking to them? I'm waiting to hear from God myself so if they could just give me a little bit of that time so I can figure out what God's talking about. Some of us are just trying to grow our way through the darkness. We're not sure where we're going. We don't know what God is doing. God has not bothered to reveal any details, and God doesn't bother to give us clear instructions. We're going without a map, but we are walking by faith, and when we walk by faith, we find it's more complicated than walking by sight. It's so much easier to walk by sight because we have the benefit of the input from our human senses, our eyes can see, our nose can smell, our hands can touch to guide us. But walking by faith is different than walking by sight. Uh, uh, because there's a risk, <laughs> in, 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 in a risk-taking dimension when you start walking by faith. In other words, when you walk by faith, you become a risk-taker. You become a pioneer. You do something that nobody else is willing to do. Uh, uh, you just do it. Uh, uh, you go in some places uh, that others are not willing to go, and you just do it. Yeah. The risk-taking dimension of faith suggests that faith is summoning us, in the words of Jesus, to cross over to the other side. It is the factor whereby God calls or bids us to make bold moves, to test the limits, to think outside of the box, and most of all, take the limits off of God to just do it. To say yes to God is a commitment to live by faith. And when we live by faith, God has a way of leading us into uncharted territory. Places where we don't have a road map. Places where we don't have a pre-planned agenda. And we just do it. We are trying to figure it out as we go. And, and, and we don't want you all to know that we don't know what we're doing or where we're going, but we're just doing it. We're trying to figure it out as we go. We even walk like we know. You know, we walk bold, like we know where we're going, and we don't have no idea where we're going. We don't even have any idea what we're doing. And as we're going, we're having that little secret talk with Jesus, like, God, don't fail me now. Because I know they just waiting. They just watching. They just waiting for me to sink. They waiting for this idea to not work. 
They waiting for this move to, that I made to not work out. They just whispering and waiting. They're waiting for me to sink. They're waiting and watching for me to drown. But I tell you, I stopped by to let you know that something happens when we obey God. That the and obey the call that God has, and we just do it. When God, uh, when we follow God where God leads us, uh, I tell you, God will not forsake us. Uh, Mary said yes to God, and she didn't know what the future would hold when she said yes to the angel Gabriel. Huh? When Paul said yes to God on the Damascus road, and the voice spoke to him from a light shining from heaven and told him he would suffer many things for Christ's sake, and that he would be a messenger to the Gentiles and take the message to the world. He didn't know exactly what was ahead when he said yes to God. I stopped by to let you know God does not always reveal the whole plan to us. We read the Bible and the stories of the people who were used by God and we discover that there will be times in our lives that we will be called to follow Christ in ways that don't make no sense. They don't make sense to us and they don't make sense to the people around us. I preached about that just a few Sundays ago. It just don't make sense. And, and, and at such a time, we have to rely on our faith more than our feelings because while our feelings may be valid, I stop by to let you know that they are not reliable. Uh, uh, can I come back and, 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 and get you on that one? Uh, it, it, I said, our feelings may be valid, but they're not always reliable. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say we walk by feelings and not by sight. It says we walk by faith and not by sight. And so even when our judgment would incline us to our own understanding and our own feelings, we discover that our feelings may be valid, but they are not always accurate and reliable. So, so while we may be apprehensive, we also learn that God's comprehension or God's wisdom is so much more comprehensive than our own. The Bible is right when it tells us God knows the end from the beginning. Howard Thurman was right when he said there's a divinity that shapes our ends. We see this time and time again in the scripture. When God called Abraham to leave everything that he had and follow him to a place that he would show him, a place of great potential, a place of great promise, but all Abraham had was God's word to guide him. And that's a good place for me to just take pause right here and say that the word of God was enough to catch Peter's attention. I need somebody to know that God's word is sometimes all that you got. But the word is enough when you really don't know where you're going. I wish I had a few people under the sound of my voice that would tell me they believe that the word still has power. That the word can still give you what you need. When you got God's word, you got enough to guide you. We see it in the disciples. When they came in contact with Jesus. And Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers. Of men. Yeah. They just did it. The Bible said they dropped their nets immediately and they followed Jesus. The text doesn't tell us that they went home to talk it over with their families. They didn't go home to have a conversation with their spouses. They didn't even go home to pack any clothes. They didn't go to consult anybody. They didn't post it on Facebook for your feedback and your comments. It says that they just dropped their nets. Uh, these were businessmen who left their business. They left their livelihood and their family and they followed Jesus at his word. Oh, the word still has power. The word still works. There's something so compelling about Jesus, something so compelling about his ministry that the first disciples did not hesitate to follow Jesus. They didn't even ask any questions. They responded immediately. They didn't take time to get their affairs in order. They didn't take time to find out who would take care of their families and everyone they were leaving behind. They just said, just do it. And they dropped their nets and followed Jesus. I'm saying all this to say that faith can be a powerful motivator. Can, can, can you tell your virtual neighbor in your virtual space uh, 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 that faith 
is a powerful motivator. Uh, faith will motivate us to take some risks. Uh, 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 that we wouldn't necessarily take. Faith will lead us and summon us to some places that we had no intentions of going. And according to the text, Peter was one of Jesus' star pupils uh, and the disciples, and he, and, and, and he was so motivated by faith that one night in the middle of the storm, it's, it's, it's in the text, it says in the middle of a storm. Somebody today out there should know that you might be in the middle of a storm, but Jesus will still speak to you. Meaning you might be coming up on the rough side of the mountain, but Jesus will still speak to you. Oh, you might be right in the eye of a hurricane in your personal life, but I want you to know that faith will motivate you in the middle of the storm. So Peter came up with a great idea because of what he saw Jesus doing, that he could walk on water. Mm -hmm. Jesus reminded us when he left, he said, and, and, we, and Peter took him at his word. And sometimes we don't take Jesus at his word. He told us when he left and when he was performing miracles and he told the disciples, he said, greater works than these you will do. He lets us know that we have the power to speak to our illness and, and it can be healed. That we have the power to speak to sickness and it will be healed. That we have the power to speak to lost situations and they will be restored. But we don't believe, we're not willing to take a risk, we're not willing to get out of the boat. But Peter, in the midst of the storm, decided he was so motivated by faith that, that he could do what faith often summons us to do, to do the unconventional, to do something he had never done before, to defy the laws of physics and walk on water. I'm not talking about pulling it, following Jesus when the sun is shining. I'm not talking about walking on solid ground. I'm not talking about getting out of the boat when you got a life jacket on. But Peter was so motivated by faith that he made the decision and came to the conclusion that he could just do it. Based on what he has seen Jesus do and walk on water, I won't argue today that faith will provoke us and motivate us. Faith will provoke us and motivate us to do some things that we've never done before. Peter, by faith in Jesus' word, decided to walk on water, so much so that he didn't just walk on water. Now, to be clear, he wasn't the only one in the boat. All of the disciples were there with him, but he was the only one that believed he could walk on water, which suggests to me that I need to tell you this one thing, that if you're going to heed the summons to go where Jesus is calling you to go, sometimes you got to leave some folk behind. Oh, is somebody going to help me preach this thing today? Oh, yes. Now tell them you, if you're going to get out the boat, there's some folks you're going to leave behind. These are the same disciples that had seen Jesus heal the sick and raise the dead and give sight to the blind and feed the multitude. They had seen the same thing that Peter saw. But out of all the disciples that were in the boat, Peter was the only one that had confidence. And so I stopped by to let you know, don't be afraid when you're the only one that's willing to step out on faith. When you're the only one that's willing to go against popular opinion. When you're the only one that says, this is what I'm going to do, even if I have to do it by myself. He was the only one that had courage to get out of the boat and walk on choppy water. <laughs> to walk in a raging storm. I stopped by to let you know faith will make you do some crazy stuff. <laughs> faith will make you try some things that other people can just step back and scratch their head. <laughs> faith will make you try some things that others will stand back and wait for the outcome. <laughs> they will withhold their conclusions and their commentaries. <laughs> and you want to know why? <laughs> it's because they are wanting to see whether you're going to sink or you're going to swim. <laughs> But I stopped by to tell you that the only confirmation you need is a confirmation from Jesus. Oh, I stopped by to tell you 
believe that faith motivated Peter in such a way that he decided to just do it. That he could do what Jesus did in the middle of a storm, in the middle of choppy waters, when the waves were against him. The text says the waves were against him. And every now and then I stop to let you know there's going to be some folks that's going to be against you. There's going to be some winds that's going to blow against you. There's going to be some criticism against you. And they tried to prohibit the progress. But I hope you can see in your sanctified imagination the intensity of the storm. These were not novice fishermen who were afraid of the storm. These were men who had made their living on the water. And it suggests to us just what kind of risk that Peter was taking when he decided to step out of the boat. Because, see, 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 they were already scared in the boat. It, it, it tells you that in the text. And, uh, I, it, but when Peter saw Jesus, every now and then when you see Jesus, <laughs> Come on. every now and then when Jesus shows up, even the most seasoned fishermen were feeling a little uneasy during the storm. But Jesus showed up at an unlikely time and in an unlikely manner. I stopped by to ask you, can someone testify with me how Jesus will show up at an unlikely time and in a very unlikely place? And so he shows up around 3 o'clock in the morning in the middle of the storm. I'm trying not to preach myself happy this morning because when I think about how he showed up in the midst of my storms when I did not expect him, when I thought I was going down for the last time, when I thought I was sinking deep in sin, Jesus came walking by and said, come unto me. Just when I needed him the most, he lifted me up. He showed up in the middle of the storm, walking on the water, even though they had thought Jesus was a ghost. When Peter saw him, he not only sees somebody, but he hears his voice. I stop by to tell you, you need to tell somebody that every now and then you need to not learn just how to read. Because sometimes you might not have the word. Sometimes you better learn the voice of Jesus. You got to learn how to know his voice. It's one thing to know his word, but when you ain't got access to the word, when you're out in the middle of a storm, far from the safe shore, sinking fast, you might be in the eye of your own personal storm. And the best way you can discern what God is telling you is not because you got your Bible with you, but because you got the word down in your heart so that you might not sin against God. I stop by to let you know it's good to know the word, but it's also good to know his voice. You ought to tell somebody, you better learn the voice of Jesus. You better learn his voice. Peter didn't get out his scripture. He didn't reach for his Bible app. He said, Master, if it is you, and Jesus called to him and said, Peter, come. And when Peter heard the voice of Jesus speaking unto him, saying, come unto me, ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Peter stepped out of the boat, and he did something he had never done before. Just do it. Faith will make you do some things you've never done before. Just do it. Faith is calling you to try some stuff you never tried before. Just do it. Oh, tell somebody, I don't have no experience. Just do it. I don't have no experience walking on the water, but just do it. Peter didn't know he was defying the laws of physics, but he heard Jesus say, come, and he did something he never done before. Oh, you ought to help me now. I'm about ready to close it down. But I need somebody to help me preach this morning and remind somebody that he said, I don't know how faith works, but I stopped by to let you know that faith will challenge you. Faith will motivate us. Faith will cause us to resist the status quo. 
Faith will cause us to try some things uh, we never done before. Huh? You may feel inadequate. Huh? Just do it. Huh? You may not know the right connection. Just do it. Huh? You may not know the right people. Huh? Just do it. Huh? You don't have enough money. Just do it. Huh? The Lord is calling you to do something huh? you never have imagined doing. Huh? Just do it. Huh? The Lord is calling you in the midnight huh? to step out. Huh? Just do it. Huh? You have a fear of failure. Huh? Just do it. Huh? You may sink. Huh? Just do it. Huh? But you won't drown. Huh? Let your faith motivate you. Huh? Just do it. Huh? It's never been done before. Huh? But just do it. Huh? Oh, the Lord is waiting for you. Huh? To just do it. Huh? Faith huh? is the substance of things hoped for. Huh? It's the evidence of things not seen. I believe I got some water walkers in this place. I believe I got some people that will get up out their seat and say I will step out on faith. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to go all the way. He said move, and I'm going to move. He said step, situation and God is telling you to move. God is telling you to go. God is telling you to do. And you just don't know. You're listening to your feelings and not your faith. I challenge you today to enter into a relationship with God. Wherever you may be, Whatever you may be going through, I want you to know that God is able. He's speaking to you right now. He's calling your name to do the impossible. Will you pray this prayer of faith with me? Lord, right now I enter into your presence. Lord, I welcome you into this space. God, I ask you to help me to be a risk taker, God. Help me, God, to just do it. Not to question you, God. Not to try to figure out your plan, God. But to walk by faith and not by sight. God, motivate me with your faith. Move me with your faith. Challenge 
me with your faith. Convict me with your faith so that I will follow you wherever you lead me. I will go. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. We're getting ready to leave this place. We thank you so much for joining us today. And as our praisers come, we want to remind you that even in the midst of your storm, Jesus will use your storm for your success. He will use your difficulty for your deliverance. He will use your troubles for your triumphs. So follow Jesus and just let you know that regardless of what anybody say, God has the last word. And he's already told you, you are blessed going out. You are blessed coming in. And so this week we pray that God's blessings will continue to fall fresh upon you. Until we come back again next week.